Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be changing the U-joints on the front drive shaft of the old 97 Jeep TJ. I lost a little bit of the video footage. Sorry about that. You'll see me, the video picks up when I'm removing the actual drive shaft. It don't show me removing the skid plate. So I'm sorry about that. And stay tuned all the way to the end because at the end of the video, actually the second half video, it shows how I balance the drive shaft while it's on the Jeep. So it's pretty neat. So anyway, let's get to it. Okay, we got the skid plate out from under it. We've got the uh, transmission held up with my floor jack. And now I'm gonna take out the eight bolts that hold in the drive shaft. Before I take this thing all the way down, here's why I have a vibration right here. It's not supposed to move like that. So it's uh it's got a bad e joint. Okay guys, we're ready to start pulling out these clips and uh, beating out these uh, universal joints. So let me get the tools and I'll get started. Just using regular old needle nose pliers, a hammer and a screwdriver to break it loose and they come in right out. So now I gotta see about beating that down a little bit. Alright, I got the front universal joint out and it, it's got this piece. I guess this is the CV part of the joint. Anyway, all the needle bearings have fell out in there and I'm going to look into replacing this. Don't know if I have to. I know I at least have to pack it with grease, but it's got a thousand needle bearings in there and they're all everywhere. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead now and try to take this rear, these rear clips out and get this rear universal joint out.
All right, I'm uh, got the new joint in, and I'm I'm pressing the caps down so I can get the uh, locking keys in. Okay, this right here is a universal that's kind of tricky. It's it's hard to get it out, and I had enough trouble with it I forgot to film. But I'm going to try to show my first go at getting it back in. I think I've got a good idea. I took all the caps off so I'd have plenty of room. No, you get too close, son. Actually, going back together is a lot easier than getting it off, or it was for me. Uh, now i got to put this cap in and this cap in while keeping these in their position, but I think that should be good. We'll see how it goes. So with, at this point, it's just simply uh, making sure you don't have any needle bearings come out and get these caps to go over these ends like that and I will press that one on with the vise. You can press them on, you can tap them in. that over so I won't risk losing any needle bearings. Alright. I've got those pressed in. Now I gotta tap them down a little bit further so I can get my snap rings into position and keep those caps from coming out. Just almost perfect. Got the uh, universal joints installed on the old TJ. And we're going to give her a test run now and see if the vibration's gone. The only thing that concerns me about it is when I got in there, uh, I didn't have this piece that the, the little CV ball, all the needle bearings had, was really loose in it and didn't have any grease in them. I packed them with grease, put them all back in place. Uh, when I grabbed the drive shaft, there is still just a, a little bit of movement. Not near as much as it was, but I'm hoping that the vibration is gone going down the road at highway speed, so let's go give it a try. Okay guys, we're back from the test drive, and I'm just going to call it like I see it. Uh, that CV ball was, was wore pretty heavily, and uh, I've got rid of half my vibration. It still has a little bit. Not bad, I can drive highway speeds without the fear that it's gonna throw the uh, drive shaft out, so. 
All right, here's an update since we put the U-joints in. I have replaced the CV yoke that goes inside the, uh, the double U-joint that connects to the transfer case. I'm not sure what you, double cardan or whatever you call it. Anyway, I still have a vibration at about 60 miles an hour. And I'm going to attempt to balance my drive shaft today by something I saw on YouTube. Let me get on here and show you what I'm doing. All right, so I cleaned a spot on my drive shaft with some sandpaper. I have my son, Seth, to get inside and put it in fifth gear. I have the wheels and tires off of it, and I have it on jack stands. And so I had him spinning the, the drive shaft in fifth gear, go into the speed that it vibrates at and it's at uh, 60 mile an hour so and i'll take a marker with it spinning and i rest it on the skid plate right here and i ever so gently let it touch the drive shaft as it's spinning and you can see i did it in two different places and it makes heavy spots so that's the part of the drive shaft it is swinging out too far so i'm going to attempt to balance it by putting more weight on this back side back here and what you do with that is use these uh, hose clamps and put the weighted part of the hose clamp on the back side of the drive shaft so this is a little jerry rigging balancing but right now it's going to get me uh where i can finally drive at highway speeds and maybe with no vibration at all so I have high hopes for this because the vibration's not too bad. It's bad enough that I do want to do something about it. And rather than spending the money on a drive shaft right now, I've got other things on this thing I need to buy, buy uh, to repair. And if this will get me through a tight spot, I will do this right now. And if it works really good, it may be a permanent fix. We'll just have to see. Uh, anyway, so let's get to it. Okay, so I have these hose clamps at 180 degrees away from the heavy spot. The heavy spot's under the hose clamps right there. I should have more weight on this back side, 180 degrees away from the heavy spot on this side. So that should make my drive shaft potentially too heavy over here. And what you do in that case is you'll move one of your hose clamps down this way and you move your other one up and the further they get away from each other they can, the weight cancels itself out so that's how you you uh you balance a drive shaft on here i've got to get a way of uh, seeing the vibration so i'm going to try to rig up some kind of a maybe a cup of water or something to show me the vibrations i'll probably hook it somewhere on the skid plate because i have no way of hooking it to the transfer case because my vibrations are coming from back here that's where i've got just a little bit of play back here so anyway let me rig up something and we'll put it in gear and we'll we'll test it and see where we're at okay i took the clamps back off for right now i have my jerry rig water bottle here that should pick up any vibrations resonating down to the skid plate uh the correct way to do it would be to have something at directly on the uh, transfer case behind where you suspect the vibrations at uh anyway i know it's got a heavy spot here because i marked it so anyway i'm gonna have my son to spin this thing up to 60 mile an hour and let's see how bad the vibration gets by the the water splashing around in the water bottle then we're gonna put the clamps back on and see if i can tune some of that vibration out so all right here we go all right seth water bottle trick didn't seem to work because I, it, it wasn't resonation resonating enough vibrations down to make the water do much but here's what I ended up with uh, looks looks terrible I know but anyway it feels good enough inside 
that I'm going to give it a test drive. Uh, this has made a significant difference with it sitting here with it, without the wheels and stuff on it. So anyway, that's why I didn't show you any of this putting on here. I didn't have to offset any of these. And the reason is, is when this thing is idling in fifth gear, I can see the movement in that drive shaft. I think the drive shaft is actually bent uh, slightly. So anyway, that means later on I will be replacing the drive shaft. But right now I'm gonna take it down the road and, uh, and see if that makes a big difference or not. And I believe it will because I can feel a difference inside when I'm driving and you know, on these jack stands. So anyway, I'll get the tires We'll put back on this thing and we'll head down the road and see what we've got. All right, guys, we've just got back from the test drive. We went out on open road on a four lane highway and drove this thing all the way up to 75 miles an hour. And I can, I promise, I'm not telling you one just to make video uh, content. I promise there is no vibration that I can feel from zero to 75 miles an hour. I didn't go any faster than that because I've got 488 gears in this thing and it. 65 mile an hour i'm running 3000 rpm so anyway i just wanted to let you know that it works uh i can't believe how well it does work i didn't have to offset any of mine i had to use end up using three hose clamps didn't have to offset them from each other because i believe my drive shaft must have a little warp to it because when this thing is idling in fifth gear up on jack stands, I can actually physically see the drive shaft wobble. So all of my weight was on the opposite side of that wobble, and uh, I put them as close to the uh, the rear U joints as I could on the front drive shaft, and it's incredible. It, it worked perfect. Every time I put uh, another hose clamp up there, I would let Seth get in the Jeep and let him put the Jeep in gear, and I would remark to see if the heavy spot moved and it never moved. So I kept adding hose clamps to that, the light side I call it, and uh, got the weight just right and drove it down the road and there's no vibration. So I am a happy camper. Uh, check out the other guy's video I'm gonna put down in the link description below. Um, it works and I owe him a big thank you and I'm gonna go back and give him a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment for him because it actually saved me from having to drive, buy a drive shaft right now. I can drive this thing to work. Seth can drive it and we can enjoy it and not have to have that terrible vibration uh, that we was getting. It wouldn't just vibrate you out of the Jeep, but I was afraid it was gonna ruin the new U-joints that I put in and the new CB centering ball that I put in. I didn't want to destroy that. I had $75 in U-joints and the CB centering ball. So anyway, I know I'm rambling on right here. If you got a vibration in your drive shafts, give the hose clamps a try. It did work for me, and if you do it right, I believe it'll work for you. So uh, come back and see us next week, and we'll see what we got going on then. Thank you for watching, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and smash that like button because that's going to help my channel out a lot. The channel's growing, and it's all due to my subscribers. Thank you all for coming and watching. Thank you for the ones that subscribed. And uh, just we'll keep up the videos and see what we can go with from here.